Hi, I'm Chris Bradshaw from Hexagon. During this video, we'll use PVLE to start to build a heat exchanger model. We'll take a look at some specific considerations that are required for heat exchangers, plus we'll take a look at some tips to make the job easier for the user. We'll then start to build the main basis of the heat exchanger, including specifying the shell side and the tube side conditions. Alright, so let's start building our heat exchanger. First thing I'm going to do is start a new file. For this example, I'm going to pick ASME Section 8 Division 1, but of course the process is pretty much identical if we choose, for example, EN 13445. I'm also going to pick ANSI and metric nozzle sizes. And because this is a heat exchanger, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell PV Leap that we're designing a heat exchanger. We do this on the Design Constraints panel. And we do this using this checkbox here, the is this a heat exchanger box. What this does, it sets the load cases to be appropriate for the uh, different process scenarios on the shell side and the tube side elements. And it also disables the design pressure and temperature area up at the top of the screen here. That's because we specify those individually on each component, whether it be shell side or tube side. So now that we've done that, we can start modeling and the first element we're going to add will be the inlet channel head, which will be the left hand end. So I'm going to add an elliptical head. First of all, this is in the vertical orientation. We want to be in horizontal, so let's flip the element orientation to flip to a horizontal. Now we do have some red text in the bottom, but let's not worry about that for the moment because we need to enter in the actual geometry. This is almost 2.5 meters diameter. We need to be a much smaller diameter than that. But before I enter in the geometry, the very first thing I'm going to do, and this is really good practice to get into, especially on a heat exchanger, is very useful to give each element a meaningful name. Not something that we've used in the previous videos, but in this one, I definitely am going to do that because it's very useful uh, on a heat exchanger. Because later on, we need to tell PV Elite which are the shell side elements and which are the tube side elements. With everything having a name, of course, that is much easier. So this will be the inlet channel head. And then this will be, I'm going to go on an outside diameter basis. So I'll change that to OD, and my OD will be 610 millimeters. Okay, so my thickness is actually sufficient. However, I am going to adjust this to a 10 millimeter thickness because this will be useful and help me later on. I'm also going to reduce the corrosion allowance to one millimeter. And then I'm sticking with SA516 grade 70, but I'm going to change the pressure. I'm going to have an internal pressure of 0 0.7 megapascals at 180 degrees and an external pressure of 0 0.05 megapascals at 80 degrees. Okay, no issues shown down in the bottom right hand corner. So let's add the next element, the inlet channel shell. So again, the first thing I'm doing here is giving this a name, the inlet channel shell. And of course, most of the properties have been inherited from the previous component. So the only thing I'm going to change here is the length. It doesn't need to be over three meters. It's just 500 mil in length. Next, we'll add the flange, which will be what the tube sheet itself is connected to. So I'm going to add a body flange. And once again, the very first thing I do, add a name for the component. inlet channel body flange. And then for entering in the geometry for the flange, I'm actually going to go to the perform flange calculation field. Although before I do that, let's change the material because this is 516 grade 70. Plate material, not suitable for a flange. So I'm going to clear the material name out. And as soon as I do that, PVLE will present the material database to me to select an appropriate material and I'm going to just go down to the search area here and I'm going to search for SA105. Forging material, suitable for our flange. I select the material. PVLE then gives me a preview of the material information, the, uh, including the temperature stress 
curve shown here looks good to me so I'm going to say select we then get the appropriate information including the allowable stresses for the current temperatures that we specified so I click OK now I can go to the perform flange calculation field and if I check the box I get the flange input dialog box where I can specify the flange type and geometry this is going to be a standard flange so I'm going to go to this area here instead of typing in the information I'm going to go down here and check the box and look up standard flange data so I'm going to look up a ANSI class 300 as you can see there's also a DIN flanges available but I'll pick ANSI class 300 nominal size 24 and hit obtain dimensions and the dimensional data is pulled the only thing I need to pick here is a gasket fill in the gasket factor M and the yield so I'm just going to hit the lookup button and I'm going to pick one of the gaskets let's say this one here the third one in the list the elastomer type gasket and I will select so of course this being a standard flange no calculation is performed um, if you do still wish to perform the calculation you can uncheck that box of course we've still got the standard flange geometry but the calculation is run um, but down here as you can see everything is blue so there are no issues the little calculator button can be used if you wish to see the detailed calculation. Okay, so next let's add the main shell. And once again, let's give it a name, main shell. And let's also pick an appropriate material. We're back at SA5, uh, SA105. I want to be back at uh, 516 grade 70. So let's clear SA105 from the material and look up SA51670 from the material database and select that. Okay. Okay, let's also just see we have the incorrect outside diameter. It's been inherited from the flange, so let's reset that back to 610. And for the length, I want to go to 2.87 meters and this main shell this is now tube side so I'm going to change the operating conditions so the internal pressure will be 1 megapascal at 120 degrees and external pressure will be 0 0.09 megapascals at 30 degrees okay and that's my main shell Next, let's put the outlet channel body flange here. So let's add a new body flange and I will call this the outlet channel. Also, let's reset the material back to SA105. And this flange will be identical to our first flange. So I'm going to go back into the perform flange calculation window. And instead of looking up the data, I'm just going to go and say, make this one just like the inlet channel body flange and hit copy now to copy all the parameters. So you can check all the boxes. Um, I'm just going to leave the default boxes checked and then hit copy to copy all of those properties from our first flange, the inlet channel flange, to the outlet channel flange, so they're identical, and hit OK. The final thing to do, of course, on here is this is back to uh, back to shell side. So let's reset the conditions back to 0 0.7 megapascals at 180 degrees internal and 0. 0 0.05 megapascals external pressure at 80 degrees. Finally, one more component for the outlet channel shell. Change the material back to SA516 grade 70. 
OK. And adjust the length to just 500 millimeters and the outside diameter back to 610. And finally, the outlet channel head by adding the elliptical head, give it a name, and there should be nothing else to change on the outlet channel head. So there's the main body of the heat exchanger. Next time, we're going to add the tube sheet itself. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. But remember, if you do have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Hexagon. Thanks for watching.